Okay, welcome to our talk about our Eclipse project, EMF Puzzle. We will show a demo and the new features. My name is Lorenzo Bettini. I'm a researcher at the University of Turing. I'm also a consultant for ITEMIS in Swiss. He's Vincenzo Caselli, working for RCP Vision, an Italian company located in Florence working on Eclipse technologies. Francesco Guidieri is not here, but he also works for RCP Vision, and we are all uh, committers of this project. What we will show is a demo of EMF Puzzle. We will implement from scratch a web application interacting with Gmail, a prototype application, and we're going to use Puzzle and RAP. RAP is the Eclipse remote application platform which allows you to easily port a, an RCP application on the web. And we will also see the new features of Parsley concerning web and mobile programming. So uh, EMF Parsley was created and proposed as a new project to provide uh, an easy to use framework to quickly implement a UI, a UI application based on an EMF model. Uh, EMF Puzzle provides uh, some reusable components, some parts, editors, and the uh, important part is that it's really easy to customize uh, these components because we use dependency injection. We use Google Juice. And we also provide a DSL to make the setup, the configuration, and the customization of an application even easier. In the demo, we will use the DSL. Uh, so these are a few examples of the components we provide. We have dialogues, trees, tables, forms, and combination of them. And we provide views and editors based on these components. So um, these components can be also seen as a reference implementation. You can develop your own components from scratch using Parsley API. What we showed here are some views based on resource and some editors and some views based on selection. And we also provide some project wizards to easily create uh, a project for Parsley and to easily uh, start your development. How it works, under the hood, Parsley reuses emf.edit. So the default behavior is delegated to the reflective capabilities of EMF edit. But if you want to customize something, you won't have to inherit from a view part or from an editor and specialize a specific method. You only care to customize a single abstract behavior and inject it in the framework, and everything will work. And as I said, we provide a DSL implemented with Xtext. Is anyone familiar with Xtext? Okay. So we provide a, a rich ID tooling and editor with all the features. And we also use Xbase. Uh, Xbase is a reusable Java-like expression language, which removes lots of noise from Java. And it provides type inference, for instance, or Lambda expressions or extension methods. Even if you don't know XBase, it's really easy to, to learn that. And XBase is completely interoper interoperable with the Java type system. And the, this means that you have access to all the existing Java libraries. <clears throat> so the idea is that you speci to specify the setup and customization in a single file, and from that file, we will generate Java code. You can still use your own Java code because the DSL and the Java code interoperate seamlessly. So this is just an idea of the editor. We will see that in the demo. And this is a typical structure of uh, an EMF Puzzle project. You have a source folder for your own Java files and a source folder where we generate Java code. So in the end, we will implement a web app client application for Gmail using Puzzle and Wrap. We want a tree view on the left showing the labels of uh, Gmail. And on the right, we want a table showing the messages of the selected label and the form with the details of the selected message in the table. So we can start the demo. So uh, for the demo, we already have an EMF model representing mail labels containing mail messages. We are currently using in this work, 
workspace, the target platform with RAP and the RAP version of EMF Puzzly. And we have an empty RAP application. So in the beginning, the application is really empty, and the application is shown on the web. And this application will then use uh, the views we will develop now. So we start, and, and for the first part of the demo, we will not interact with Gmail. We will do everything on a local EMF resource, and then we'll switch to, to Gmail. So we start by creating a project with our project wizard. Uh, we check the uh, checkbox for preparing the project for single sourcing for RAP. And then we provide a few templates to start from. Each template will tell you what you need to specify. We start with a savable tree view. This is a tree view which acts on a, look, on a resource. So you have to specify the URI, the EMF URI of the resource. So this is the DSL. Uh, just let me show a few things. You see there's also a section for view parts. From, from this section, we will generate the plugin XML. And in this part, we specify the URI, the EMF URI of the resource. And we will do with XBase. And we have full access to Java types with code completion and automatic imports. And then you can just use the methods of this class. So in this case, we will refer to a resource in the local file system, which is already filled with some contents. And we are ready to go already. So we now start the wrap application. And that's what you get by default. So you have a tree view with the contents. By double clicking, you have a dialog for editing. And you have also the contextual menus. And this is just for free and the, the default behavior. Now we start customizing this view. We will customize the label provider for these nodes, and we want to avoid showing the children messages because we will show them later in the table. And we do that in the DSL. There is a specific section for all of these uh, customizations. We already have some icons that we will reuse. Since we want to access the model, the types of the model, we have to put a dependency on the EMF model project. And now we're ready to use the DSL. We use the section label provider. And in this section, um, we specify the text for a mail label. So here, mail label is actually the type. So, and again, here, there's XBase in action with full code completion for accessing the features of that type. So we will use the name plus uh, the total messages. And for the images, we only need to specify the name of the file. Uh, now, in this demo, we will use some copy and paste just to go faster. Okay? But, so we just need to specify the uh, folder P and G. And for the content provider, there's a specific section. In this case, we specify that the children of a mail label is the empty list. Okay, so now we start the application with customizations. And this is what you get, the new labels with images and no more children. Okay, just with that section in the DSL. Now I think we're ready to start programming the other view. Again, we use the project wizard. Again, we use single sourcing for RAP. Uh, feel free to interrupt at any point. And now we use another template, an, an on-selection view, a, a table with a form showing the elements. We need to specify which, are, which is the type of the element that have to be shown in the table. So again, we do that with standard Java EMF API. We need to add the dependency on the model project. And now it's just standard EMF API. You need to specify an E class, so you need to use the package, the literals, 
and then message E class because we want to show in the table the messages. That's all. We can already start the application. Now, this view will react on selection. So if, if we select something here, you get the, in the table all the messages of that label. And by selecting something here, we'll show the details of the message in the, uh, in the form, in the detail form. Now, we, and that's again the default behavior, just by specifying a single type. Now we want to customize the columns of the table, what to be shown on the column, and also to provide a bit, a, another formatting for the date. Again, back to the DSL. Uh, we have a section for labels, for the, uh, sorry, for the features. So the features for um, uh, mail messages, mail message, again, this is a Java type. And so the features will be specified in a statically check way. We have code completion. And here, you can only specify the features of that type. And that's an important part. Everything in Parsley in the DSL is statically type checked. You won't risk to specify a feature that's not part of that type. You won't have bad surprises at runtime. Okay? Now we can also uh, specify the, uh, the formatting for uh, the date feature of mail messages. Okay, again, we, we have a template, sorry, just to go a little bit fast. Uh, another important point, uh, you also have the standard quick fixes, for instance, for missing imports, okay? So also command shift O will work out of the box. And again, this is standard Java code. I mean, it's X base, but it's not that different from Java. And we can also specify the font, the background and foreground colors, either of a single cell or of the entire row. Now we specify the font of the entire row and the background color for messages. And we, if for messages which are unread, we will use a different font and a different background color. So let's see that in action. And now you see that uh, messages which are, which are unread have a different font and background color. You see all the features that we specified in the right order. Different formatting for date. Hmm? Okay, now we can customize the, uh, the, mess the, the tail of the message. We can customize again the features to be shown and also the controls of the form. <coughs> So we use the uh, features provider again for a mail message, but that in that case, that will work on the form. Hmm? And so this is a little bit longer. This allows you to specify the control in the form for a given feature of a given type. Again, this is basically Java. Uh, I mean, we are interacting with the Java library. Uh, we use XSpace, which provides, as I said, a, a kind of better Java with less syntactic noise. But in the end, this is Java API. And in this case, we use a browser for the body of the message. These ones in square brackets are XSpace Lambda expressions. We can see uh, the result. And by selecting a message, see we have a, another control for the date and a control for the browser. And now, uh, one, I think one of the most important part of the DSL, let's go back to, the, to Eclipse. We can set a breakpoint here and we can debug our own DSL. There's no need to debug the generated Java code. That's something you kind of get for free from XBase, but that's really important. 
uh, you don't need, to, you can also switch to generated Java code, but in the end you have the same views. For instance, you see the layout data has changed when we perform one step. So you still have all the features you have with Java. The, um, that's, and that's another important thing, uh, I mean, another important feature of a statically typed approach. So uh, with reflective approaches, if something goes wrong, uh, you don't know where to, to look at. Here you have full control of your code. Okay, uh, I think we can switch to the last customization. Uh, context menu, uh, by default, this is the standard uh, editing actions and the standard EMF actions. Let's see how to customize this context menu. And that's something that if you want to do that in Java directly, it's not that completely easy. Here uh, we have a section in the DSL, Menu Builder, where we can specify the standard editing uh, actions for a given type. For uh, a mail message, we need to specify the list of the uh, elements in the menus. We use the X-based syntax for lists. And then we provide the Java API to specify the actions. You can simply, you can also use separators, and now we put uh, undo and redo. That's for the editing part. And then we have a section for the EMF part. And here we provide a Java API to easily specify a menu action. You only need to specify the name of the entry and then a lambda. And that's all. We are uh, switching the state of unread. This unread is actually the, uh, the feature of the message. Okay, if we start the application, we see that these are our custom context menu. You see the editing actions. And then we have this new action. By selecting that, you see the uh, message is actually changed to unread. And the important thing, we have undo and redo working out of the box. You didn't have to care or of dealing and maintaining the editing domain. We will do that for you. Just by specifying the action in that way, in that programmatic way, you have undo and redo out of the box. Now we are ready to, uh, as I said, now we are using a local resource. We already have an implementation of uh, a Java service uh, that interacts with Gmail API, periodically polls Gmail and updates the local resource. And we also have a listener on the resource pushing the changes back to Gmail. And to enable that, what we had to do was to customize the resource loader mechanism of Parsley, and we just need to inject the custom version into the framework. And we do that like that. This is a Google Jewish dependency injection binding. So we say that the uh, type of the resource loader is actually implemented, remove bind, remove bind, is actually implemented by control shift o control shift o <coughs> you say that this type will be implemented by uh, this java uh, service implementation that's all we are injecting this custom element in the framework and now uh, the application will be slower because we, it will uh, actually interact with Gmail. And if the network works, okay. Yeah, I know these look similar, but these are actually on Gmail. And we can see that if we go on Gmail, on this account, we can, uh, this is the same message Okay, we can mark it as unread on, on Gmail, wait for the next polling, and it changes here. And the other way around, 
it works again, so as well. So we can reload that, and the status has changed. So just by inject this, this custom implementation, so you can implement everything locally with your own resource, and then inject custom code into the framework. Uh, have you tried to send a message? We can see that it actually, it doesn't, okay. So it's not our fault. It, <coughs> it takes some time to, for Gmail to receiving uh, another message, I guess. Okay, but anyway, uh, if we go back to the, um, to the workspace, we can see that we actually uh, have single sourcing because now we're switching from the uh, RAP target platform to the running platform, which is based on RCP and the RCP version of RAP. We wait for the uh, workspace to rebuild. Of course, the RAP application won't compile anymore. And we have an RCP application that it uses our views. We didn't have to change anything in the views we just developed. And we just start the RCP ap application. And you get exactly the same application, not on the web, but uh, as an RCP application. Thanks to RAP and to the uh, EMF Parsley version of RAP. OK? So this is an RCP application, no, no web anymore, but we didn't have to change anything in the source code. Okay, now I'm switching to the presentation to Vincenzo, who is going to present the new features. Okay, can you hear me? So, okay, we have seen that Parsley can be used in, for web development and uh, with RAP, and in fact, we have um, it in production with some products. But we wanted to go beyond, beyond uh, OSGI, RCP, and RAP concepts. And we wondered, is it possible to run Parsley in a pure Java environment, like uh, the JE environment. So we started separating the Parsley core from the UI part and uh, surrounded the Parsley core with a JE layer. The RCP plugins de dependencies are still there because we need them, but we used them as just as simple jars. And Thanks to the usage of Google Goose injection, we have Parsley Core fully operative again. The JE layer, which is basically made of servlets, uh, does the works of use of, uh, it uses Parsley uh, Core and explores the EMF resources and exposes them through JSON following Parsley customizations. Um, we also implemented a headless and lightweight uh, porting of SWT layer that allows you to customize widgets. So you can use the classic dynamic web project wizard, and we implemented a couple of new facets. Uh, the JSON Parsley uh, server face it, and in this case, the UI AngularJS part, as an example. If you want to use the EMF persistence capability, you can still use them. You have, for example, TNEO and CDO out of the box, but you can also provide your own resource management, as we did in the Gmail example. So in the end, you uh, uh, get a, a project, which is a JE project, with its dependencies to the jars, uh, with the DSL, with the, with the folder with the generated uh, classes, with the UI part, and so on. 
Choosing JSON al allows you to uh, build your own UI virtually with any technology. You just have to render the JSON of output. We have made some uh, initial uh, implementations uh, for, the web, for the web with AngularJS and GWT, and for the mobile, uh, for the native mobile, and for the hybrid mobile, with a couple of Eclipse projects. So here you can see a table, a table component, and a form, uh, partially table component, rendered in, uh, with AngularJS. And here you can see in the DSL how you can map the views, a couple of views, <coughs> users and group, to the correspondent EMF URIs. In this case, you have Tineo URIs. You can still customize the widgets, as, we said, as I said before. Uh, for example, let's take uh, the birth date uh, field, which is normally rendered as a text, and so maybe you want to render it as a date time, and you can do it easily with a uh, uh, little customization in the DSL. And uh, uh, so you can customize it and have a date, or leave it uncustomized and have a text. Either way, a headless and lightweight SWT control is created, but not rendered, and its content is used to populate the JSON output. By the way, the same customization can be used in the RCP uh, or in the RAP uh, version, and you can have the same behavior with the same customization. Uh, here you can see a table component and a tree form parsley component rendered in with GWT. Here you can see a snapshot of an Android um, uh, output, Android application made with the Parsley and Eclipse theme that is uh, an Eclipse project based on Apache Cordova that allows you to cross the cross mobile development for I iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. Uh, who ma how many of you have installed this application on the store? Okay, not so many. Uh, anyway, this is an application that gives you the session scheduling of this uh, wonderful three days event, uh, EclipseCon Europe. 2015. This application has been uh, written, built uh, with Parsley and the, the Eclipse More, Eclipse and More, which is a fork of the ADT project. So this is a list of uh, resources about EMF Parsley, but I think uh, Lorenzo has something more to tell you. Just. Uh, uh, yeah, ju just a few additional words. Um, we are pretty concerned about uh, code quality, and as an Eclipse project, we use Sonar Cube, and this is the Sonar Cube analysis of um, Parsley. Uh, I think. Two hours and four minutes of technical depth is not that bad. Uh, we have, I think, good code coverage, more than 90%. We don't have dependency cycles. We don't have duplicated codes. Uh, we are pretty concerned on testing and on co of code quality. I know that this is no guarantee that everything works, but I think it's a good starting point. Uh, and with that respect, I'm going to give a talk, uh, the, the last talk um, at the Project Quality Day this afternoon about testing X-Text languages, just in case. Um, so these are the, um, some references to... Um, ah, 
to Parsley. Um, we have a web page with documentation. We try to keep it up to date. Uh, you can use the forum. We are trying to be pretty reactive or Bugzilla. Uh, we are still in, in the uh, incubating phase. We plan to release the first 1.0 release by the end of the year. So now we are at uh, 0.5. Everything is still provisional, but we provide the migration guide from version to version. Uh, what we saw in the demo is already available. Uh, what uh, Vincenzo showed uh, should be available in the next couple of days or weeks. Um, okay, that, that, that uh, well, okay. Anyway, yeah, you can show the, the website. If in the meantime, there are questions. Uh, Yeah, for the validation, you can use the standard EMF validation. And in case there are errors, we will pick them up. And for the moment, there's no additional uh, mechanism because uh, we think the, the one of EMF is, could be enough. We can think of an, an additional validation layers, but for the moment. And what I forgot to tell is that uh, if you use, if you have an existing edit plugin, it will work with Parsley. We were using an edit plugin there. So the idea is that you can also partially migrate an existing EMF application to Parsley and still reuse something from the edit plugin if you, if you want. <coughs> Yeah, uh, for instance, I know this is a prototype uh, uh, version of the web application. I mean, in, the, in a real-world application, what I would suggest to do is to, f on, the, on the first uh, access, start and download everything using proxies in the right places so that EMF then will resolve them uh, on demand. And then all, all the other accesses should be just check whether there's something new. As I've understood it, you're actually converting the EMF models to a JSON representation. Well, for, for, yeah, for, for the G double two E part, uh, probably Vincenzo can tell you something more. Uh. So yes, we convert uh, the EMF uh, in in JSON. So. Obviously, you cannot uh, uh, re return a, a bunch of data in this way. You have to return uh, like a um, lazy loading, so you can return just a section of the of, the, of your data and implement some. Uh, paging or some lazy loading uh, subsequent request. Yes, it's uh, um, and uh, with RAP you have the same uh, pattern with the RCP, so it's another uh, uh, way. With JSON, you have the JSON output. You are not tied to Angular or GWT. You, uh, you we just implemented some JSON. Re, um, uh, let's say uh, rebuild the UI from the JSON but you can implement it with any technology. Other questions?
with uh, standard extension point mechanisms? Uh, currently not, but I mean, it should be a matter of a few lines. Uh, uh, well, I, I said currently not, but uh, it pro it's already probably working if EMF edit uh, uses that information in the plugin XML. I, I don't, so. Okay, so it, it's going to, to work out of the box. I, I, I never tried that. <laughs> But if EMF edit uh, picks them up, then we will use them as well. Thank you. For the <laughs> Any other question? Oh, yeah. What's the difference uh, between EMF coupling and EMF um, <clears throat> Well, I think they mainly target the same goal. Uh, what I can say is that we try to follow uh, a programmatic approach rather than something based on the model for representing U the UI. I think the other important difference is that we rely on dependency injection instead of st other standard mechanisms like extension points. We, we found that dependency injection is really helpful for, uh, I mean, we, we uh, took lots of inspiration from x they, they, they use, depend, they, they've been using dependency injection from the start, and they, it proved uh, a, a cool mechanism for customization. So I, I think these are the main uh, differences. And that, I mean, using this programmatic approach and the dependency injection, I think it's easier to debug and understand what's going on, especially if something goes wrong. Any other question? Uh, we'll be around anyway. So thanks a lot for listening. <laughs>